friends, it's Stu here. I'm in Zion National Park in southwest Utah and I'm looking for a spot to do some plain air painting. Originally I thought I would want to paint by the Virgin River over here. This is uh, about 200 feet from our camper that we have parked at the campground here and I wanted to do the river but after walking over here I saw something else that I would rather paint so maybe we'll save the river for tomorrow <laughs> or another day and instead of course it looks a little different right now but the sunlight was right on this big rocky cliff side here and I decided that's what I'm going to paint so I'll show you my setup here in one second but this is kind of what I was thinking that <laughs> back there behind me. The sun has been peeking out of the clouds and then going back behind the clouds and it looks like there are more clouds on the way so we're probably going to be painting mostly in clouds today. I can set my plain air painting view catcher to 11 by 14 inches and that is the size of my canvas panel I'm working on today so you can go like this and kind of see that's my dimensions for the canvas and then we just want to find our view for the painting I'm thinking something like this I really like I want some sky in there, but I would like some blue sky. There was a little bit of blue sky <laughs> earlier and now it's already gone. But that is plain air painting for you. This is, that's pretty much what I think. I want that big rock in the foreground in the lower left. And then I want maybe a touch of that rock on the right and that big peak in the background. I started by marking the canvas into four quadrants, putting a little crosshair in the center of the canvas. And then I looked in my viewfinder, kept my brush close to the canvas, and started sketching out the scene based on the borders of the viewfinder, just putting everything exactly as I'm seeing it in my little viewfinder view catcher, and sketching out the general features that will help me to identify where colors and shapes should go on the canvas once I'm done with that viewfinder. I'm sketching out the scene by using thin down oil paint. I thin my paint down using citrus solvents. And the canvas is washed with like a light burnt umber, burnt sienna mixture. I did that several days before so this wash is dry and it's not going to blend with the colors that I'm about to put down. After sketching out the scene and making sure the proportions look accurate, I started to add some color to the painting, starting with the sky. I wanted to include some nice phthalo blue, clear blue sky, and then add some clouds in there. At some point throughout this process, the sky actually did start to look like this and then it went back to clouds. Uh, but I wanted to include a little bit of blue in there just to make it a little more exciting. Next I started blending colors on my canvas for the rock cliff face that I was going to paint. And matching colors when you're plain air painting is easier than matching colors when you're painting in a studio, in my opinion, because you can just mix the color on your palette and then hold it up in front of you and see if that color on your brush matches the object that you're painting. I will say that it matters if you are in sunlight and your object is in shadow and vice versa. You want to make sure that you are both in shadow or you are both in sunlight so that your colors are matching um, what you're seeing on the brush is matching what you're painting. And as I started painting this rock structure, everything is in shadow. As I continued working, the sun started to peek out and then I got really excited by how the rock looked when the sun was on it. So I start to add some highlights to this rock and decided to paint it as if it were almost fully 
lit up by sunlight uh, by the end of this painting. But for now, everything is still kind of in shadow, just working on matching my colors to what I'm seeing in nature and starting to get those basic shapes and a base layer of paint down that is not too bright and not too dark. Look at the squirrels. The trickiest part of this plein air painting was getting all of those little crevices, cracks, and bedding layers of the rock face to be accurate and proportionate. Uh, and to get these accurate, I kind of just started with the base working my way up, and then that large crack right at the bottom of the right side of that angle kind of comes right down. Once I got that angle correct, I could evenly space out where my other crevices should be there and kind of played around with it a little bit, getting more shadows and highlights in as I continued to work, starting to build up those highlights on the rock. And basically any chance that I had where the sun illuminated this rock face, I was adding highlights and taking mental notes of where things were lit up and where things were darkened and deeper in shadow. And here we have a rare moment where both my painting palette, my painting easel, and the rock face that I was painting were all illuminated by sunlight. And things started to really come together at this point. the brushwork somewhat loose in the foreground area just to focus more on the color accuracy rather than the details which is tough for me to do <laughs> and then I signed the painting and took some photos of the finished painting and of course the rock face was in shadow for that part but that's okay I came back a little later and it was lit up by the Sun again so I got some nice pictures at the very end
Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed watching me do some plain air painting. This is the first plain air painting I made in 2021 and I'm looking forward to doing many more plain air paintings this year, especially in national parks. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss my weekly painting videos I post every Thursday. Have a great day guys. Happy painting. Bye bye.